Hello everyone, thanks for joining me for this week's reef health update. As we reported last week about the release of the reef snapshot, that provides information upon the cumulative pressures that affected the reef this year. That's included obviously the temperature stresses and cyclone and flood events, but it also summarises what we know about crown of thorn starfish activity currently in the marine park. It's important also that we protect the corals that survive things like the current coral bleaching event from further pressure such as predation by crown of thorn starfish, both so we keep as many adult corals alive as possible, but also because we're protecting their baby corals that they produce that can help to drive regional patterns of recovery. The Crown of Thorn Starfish Control Program has been running for many years. It's actually, it was actually around in times of previous outbreaks, but over the course of the current outbreak, which has been running from around about 2012, we've incrementally had more and more control effort in the marine park. It's also coincided with a period of time which up until this year had had relatively calm conditions in terms of the effects upon coral cover. And so we're actually now able to see what the consequences of the targeted Crown of Thorn Starfish Control activity has actually been on the controlled reefs compared to the other impacts. Crown of Thorn Starfish Control, when it's sustained and well targeted and at sufficient levels, that we can actually see major outcomes for coral cover and coral protection across regions of the Great Barrier Reef. We've known for some time that we could control Crown of Thorn Starfish at the scale of individual sites, areas on an individual reef, but this uh, information shows that we can control Crown of Thorn Starfish at the scale of whole individual reefs, which might be a few kilometres squared across, right up to regional areas that could be many hundreds of square kilometres across and this is really important because it helps to build our knowledge about how we should target the program into the future in order to maximize the benefits something that's crucially important given that we're getting increasing consequences of a rapidly changing climate overall we're also continuing to work with our partners on many other initiatives and I want to hand you over to our partners now to give you some insights into what they've been doing over the past few months there are different land and sea ranger programs and tamaras and other management actions happening on the reef from traditional owner groups. Some are more, you know, active in the catchment on the beach, doing, you know, beach cleanups, cleaning up the waterways, doing sort of restoration work around mangroves, seagrass, and there are others who are out on the reef doing so on ground action around, you know, coral uh, reef sort of restoration management work. So, you know, it's quite broad range of different things that we're all different doing. Uh, we all have different priorities. Um, some are more working closely with wildlife, so our marine turtles, um, you know, nesting sites, habitat, but also, you know, uh, dugongs and seabirds. So there's a whole range of different things that we're doing. It's really important that, um, you know, relationships is um, a part of the you know, management. So working in partnerships is part of that relationship, working in partnership with others, but also having that on-ground presence and, and actually giving back and contributing to uh, the stewardship of our, of our reef. So tourism plays a very big part in monitoring and surveying our sites locally um, through us always being out there every day where we can see how the health of the reef is actually going through our surveys and also just general maintenance of the actual sites that we visit. Over the last couple of months, our tourism operators have submitted over 3,500 surveys through the Eye on the Reef um, program, and as well as that has helped to deal with the coral eating pests, um, to look after our own patch, and as well as that give a broader perspective of how the health of the reef is going. As part of the Reef Joint Field Management Program, Queensland Parks and Wildlife Rangers have been on the ground every day, checking for change, welcoming people, upholding compliance, and making sure that users are doing the right thing across the reef. And we continue to do so every day of the year across the Great Barrier Reef. Over the last couple of weeks, Queensland Parks and Wildlife have deployed their vessels along with partners in the Reef Authority to fill in the gaps of knowledge to look at how severe the bleaching has been from the aerial surveys conducted by the Reef Authority and the Australian Institute of Marine Science. As you've heard, it's really important that we do everything we possibly can in order to reduce local scale pressures whilst globally we address um, the rapidly changing climate pressures that are coming to all of the world's reefs. You've heard about many of the um, activities that are being done on the reef right now to reduce those local pressures. Clearly you can always help us by providing information on what you see out in the marine park through the Eye on the Reef app.
We'll continue to keep you updated upon conditions on the reef and actually what our work is doing 365 days a year, 24 seven, because that's the way in which we will secure the best possible future for the Great Barrier Reef. You can keep up to uh, abreast of those things by following us on the social media channels and also through our reef health pages on the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority's website. Thank you for your attention.